Hello, my name is Brittany and welcome to Family Friday's Paint Night. A few words before we begin. Thank you for your continued interest and support for this workshop. You can expect a new video every third Friday of the month for the foreseeable future until we can resume classes in person at the Art and Spirituality Center. Speaking of which, there are other classes being held virtually if you are interested in taking any of those. I'll leave the link to our virtual calendar in the description box below. As a reminder, my class was made to promote bonding between family and friends. You do not need to be an artist to enjoy art. My art isn't perfect, so don't think yours needs to be either. To all those participating in this activity, I want you to try your best and don't worry about the outcome. My hope is for you to let go, get lost in the artistic process, and forget about what's currently happening in the world, even just for a little bit. One last thing before we begin. Feel free to pause, rewind, fast forward, mute, or do anything you need in order to follow along with this video. I normally take over three hours to complete a painting even though my class runs about two and a half hours. For the sake of time and to make a short video, the clips you see of me painting are sped up significantly. Please, by all means, relax and take your time. I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. Here is what we will be painting for October of 2020. Disclaimer, this is not my original artwork as I found it somewhere on the internet. I do not take credit for this concept and I wish I could find the original artist to give credit. Think of this as a study of the original artwork. In the theme of Halloween, here we see the dark silhouettes of trees with bats flying in front of a spooky October moon. Feel free to take artistic control, change the colors, make additions or adjustments, or change it up completely. The choice is yours. All right, let's talk about paint. We'll be using acrylic paint for this activity. You can use the fancier, more expensive paints if you want to. For this project, I'll be using paints you can find at your local craft store or even Walmart that are less than a dollar. We'll need a few colors, red, orange, yellow, dark blue, purple, black, and white. We'll need a few brushes today, a large flat brush, a medium flat brush, a small round brush, and a thin detail brush. Optional is a fan brush for the trees, but you can do the trees with your small round brush. Some other materials we will need, something to put under the canvas or canvas board, such as a tablecloth or newspaper. You can also use a mat board like this one that I've used several times. Of course, you need something to paint on. I personally will be using a canvas board, 12 by 16 specifically. You can also use an actual canvas of any size too. Then we have our paints. You'll need a plate to put the paint on. You can also use a palette if you have one. A water cup to clean your paint brushes. And lastly, a paper towel or an old towel. I have a towel I've used plenty of times for other paintings as you can see here. Okay, order of operations how this painting will go. First with our purple paint, we will draw a circle outlining the moon. And then around the moon, we will paint a purple and blue layer for the sky. After that, with some watered down white paint, we will use an upwards flicking motion for stars. Once that dries, we will paint some black hills where the trees will go. After that, we will start painting the moon, first with a yellow and then going into an orange. Once that dries, then we will start the craters and spots of the moon. Once that dries, then we can add some of the stars in the sky. Once that is all dry, then we will map out where we want our trees to go. With our small round brush or our fan brush, we will do the branches and leaves of the trees. After that, we will draw and paint in the bats. Okay, first I'm going to start off by mixing a blue-purple color by mixing those two colors together. Just to give the sky some dimension, I'm also just going to have some purple on hand as well. With my large flat brush and the color I just mixed, I'm going to roughly sketch out a circle for the moon. You can trace the circle if you want to, but I was just eyeballing this part. And then from there, we will do a purple layer right next to where the white of the moon is. 
and then going out to the edges I will paint with that color that I just mixed. I did notice that you could still see the white of the canvas after I just painted this so if you do need to take a couple of layers just let this first one dry and you can paint over it as well. Now I'm going to pour out some fresh purple and also some white. This is optional, you do not have to do this, but I was just going to add some, some strokes of white in there to make it look like the moon is shining a little bit or that it's a little windy outside. Um, this is just to give it a little bit more dimension, you do not have to do this next part. to grab my medium flat brush and in a little portion I'm going to mix some watered down white paint not so drippy but not so thick either and then I'm going to hold it and with my index finger I'm going to flick it in an upwards motion pointing down this will make a mess on your table and I'm just going to give it a few flicks and those flicks will create droplets and those droplets look like stars in the sky After the smaller stars and our background is dry, I am going to pour out some black paint and I'm going to paint the hills that the trees will be growing from. You'll see here and throughout I am adding in some white to the hills just to give it some dimension and so you can see that the hills one is in front of the other. Eventually I thought this was a little too light for me so at the end I did color it in a little bit darker. So if you want to leave it completely black, that is totally fine. If you want to leave it to where it's a little bit gray mixed in, like you're about to see here, that is fine as well. You can always change it. are going to start painting the moon. I poured out some yellow and some orange onto my palette and I felt like the shape of my moon was pretty circular but it does have a few spots that could be rounded out a little bit more. So as I'm painting with my large flat brush I am going to start rounding it out a little bit more and if I do go outside of my circle, which I will later, um, I'm just going to fix it with some dark purple again. Um, right here, going to the bottom left corner, I'm mainly going to focus it on yellow 
and then on the opposite way I will make it orange and eventually the two will meet in the middle and blend together and as I'm blending this all I'm doing with my medium flat brush is just going in circles and just mixing it together not making it perfect if we look at the moon if you can ever see it and focus on it it's not completely blended and it does have shadows and craters so feel free to just do your best and don't worry if it's not too circular, I'm sure it looks just fine. Okay, so as you can see, I did paint outside of my moon circle, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that. I'm going to paint around it the purple color going into the blue color, just like how we did in the beginning. And once that is to my satisfaction, I need to put the stars back. So again, with my medium flat brush and my watered down white paint, I'm going to cover the moon so that the stars don't get on that protect it and do my stars in the flickering motion and it should be as good as new. I am going to add the bigger stars to the background with the end of one of my brushes I'm going to mark where I want them to go I'm gonna add some in the top left corner a little bit on the right side of the moon and a few on the underside of the moon even though the trees might cover that up so first I'm going to add the dots and then with my lined with my liner brush or my detail brush first I'm going to make two lines that basically look like a cross um, eventually they'll look like a plus sign and then in that spot I'm going to make an X so in total there should be let's see one two three four five six seven eight points to the star Thank you. 
on to painting the craters of the moon. You don't need to do this part if you don't want to. If you like the way that it looks just by the blended yellow and orange, that is totally fine. Um, this is a little bit tricky, so I understand if you don't want to do this part. But first, I'm going to map out three kind of lumpy circles to serve as the craters. And then once I have those mapped out, I'm going to blend that yellow outwards. If you need to get more yellow paint like I just did, that is okay too. And this will serve as the highlight, the peak of where the crater is. And then eventually I will be adding in an orange on the inside of that line to give it some depth like we're, like it's a little bit deeper. So now I'm going to start on the two craters that are closer to the top of the moon. I'm going to pour out some red and orange and mix that together. And with my lined brush, again, I'm going to draw out some lumpy circles, <laughs> some imperfect circles. And the same concept here, I'm going to be blending in the darker colors in the middle and then putting in some yellow outside. Eventually this did get a little too dark for me so you'll see me adding in some oranges and some yellows back in there just trying to get it to the original color like how it was when we first started and it, I felt like this was a little too red and the like a full moon sometimes gets a little bit red so with that same color I will add it to the top right corner a little bit and then blend that in as well but however you do your moon I'm sure it looks great and take your time don't stress out on this part if you don't like it after you do the craters you know what you can always paint right on top of it happy accidents
now that our moon is painted, no matter which way you did it, we're going to move on to painting the trunks of the trees. So first I'm going to map out the spacing of how many trees I want. You can make this as sparse as you want to. You don't have to do as many as I do. I just wanted mine to look a little bit full. So first I'm going to put the lines on the bottom of the tree and then depending on the height, I'm also going to make some lines matching the spacing and the points of where I want the peaks of the tree, where I want them to go. Then I will connect those two lines together one at a time. Some of the lines, the longer ones, I know I won't be able to paint in a straight line, so I might have to do some dashes in between and just basically connect the dots. No matter which way you do, right now we are just going to be doing the trunks of our trees. Now the fun part we're gonna move on to the silhouettes of the trees um, optional is a fan brush I know not everyone has a fan brush so I'm going to show you how to do it with a medium round brush so basically starting from the center of where we just did our tree trunk I'm gonna make some outwards lines kind of just like a pine tree Christmas tree um, I don't know how to do trees so well this is just how I do my trees you can do it however you would like but I'm just going to make it as thin or as full as I want to. Just starting from the base, I'm going to make all of those lines going down. And once it gets closer to the bottom, I'm going to try to fan it out a little bit more. I'm going to do one more example of this kind of tree and then we're going to move on to the fan brush. now with a fan brush there are different types of fan brushes some are more full some are bigger and thicker the one that I have is on the thinner side not as many bristles so this works for this small of a painting but I'm just gonna dip it in some black paint and have it hold my brush to where it is flat um, horizontally and going back and forth from the center I'm just going to make those branches and I know it looks a little bit bare right now, so I'm just going to keep doing that so it thickens up. And then again, just like how we did the other tree, I'm going to make it a little bit fuller from the bottom. And once it gets closer to the top, not as much, I'm going to use the outside bristles of my fan brush and do the, the top part.
last but not least are the bats that we will draw and paint in black. This is probably the most intricate thing that we're going to do is this drawing part. So first is the body and the head, which are both rounded triangles, just the body is a little bit longer, and then triangles for the ears of the bat. And then right now I just did a curved line going up with two lines flared out from the body, two lines going down, and then these little points of the wings. Whenever I was doing the wings, I kept on thinking what the bottom of an umbrella looks like, so kind of just channel that if you can. Um, just try your best, I know that this part gets a little bit tricky. Okay, and this bat is basically the same, starting off with the head and the body and the ears, just a bunch of triangles, some are a little bit rounded. For these ones, the wings aren't as intricate as the one that we just did, so I'm going to start off with this wing, which I started off with one line going up, and then it does a little wave, and then the little umbrella part right here. I'm sorry, it's really hard to <laughs> explain this one, I wish I could do it for you. And then this part, just trying to match the other side as best as I can, kind of looks like a little diamond right there and then the bottom of the umbrella right there. So it looks a little bit uneven right now. I'm just making it bigger to kind of match the other side. And then last but not least is this bat, which looks like it's flying to the left. So kind of doing a side profile here, starting with the head and going to this first wing, just a long curved line. Not as many little umbrella peaks on this one one going down and then one wave right there connecting that one and same on the other side and now with our smallest brush I'm going to fill all of those bats in with black As I mentioned before, I wasn't too crazy with how light these hills are. I kind of like how it blends in with the trees, that idea. So I'm just going to add some black coming off of the tops of these hills. And I'm going to add in some, some color back in, some of that white gray color. But feel free to leave it like this, to keep it a little bit more white, to paint it completely black. I think in the original picture that I saw it was completely black, but I just wanted to give it a little bit more definition. But this is the last step, so enjoy the rest of your time.
that is it my friends. Good job if you made it this far and completed the painting. I'm happy with my finished product and I hope you are with yours too. If your painting looks different from mine, that is totally fine. Again, I miss everyone and I really wish I were with my Family Friday class painting alongside them. I'm also happy to know that more people have gotten the chance and opportunity to do art safely at home and on their own time. I hope these videos bring you joy and you were able to relax and not worry about the current events of the world even just for a little bit. Have a great rest of your weekend, a safe Halloween, and I'll see you next time.